We've talked about DNA. We've talked about RNA. We've talked about uh, transcription and translation. Now it's time to talk about the last part, mutations. Now there are certain types of uh, mutations and sometimes cells make mistakes copying their DNA, inserting the wrong base or skipping the base altogether as a strand is put together. And when we say this base, we're talking about those nucleotides, those letters, the A, the C, the G, the T, in DNA or the ACGU in uh, RNA. Now, this is called a mutation. It's a heritable change in genetic information. Now, there are countless examples of mutations, but all fall into one of two categories. Uh, the first category is called gene mutations, and it's those that produce changes in a single gene. And the second one, uh, second category is the chromosomal mutations, those that produce changes in whole chromosomes. Now, gene mutations, uh, they are genes that involve uh, changes in one or a few nucleotides. They're known as point mutations because they occur at a single point in the DNA sequence. So here we have nucleotides. Those are the uh, bases, the letters, the A, the C, the G, T in DNA, or the A, C, G, U in RNA. Now, they include substitutions, deletions, and insertions. Scientists have done us a favor here by naming them exactly uh, what they are. If a gene in one cell is altered, the replication error can occur from every cell that develops from that original one. Now, substitutions, what happens is exactly what it says. One base is changed to a different base. Usually affects one amino acid and sometimes may have no effect at all. Some bases code for the same thing. CCC codes for a certain amino acid and so does CGA. They code for the same amino acid. Now, insertions. Point mutation in which one base is inserted into the DNA sequence. The effects can be dramatic. Codons are read in groups of three. They will always be read in groups of three. And adding one requires the entire sequence to be misread because they're going to be continued to be read in groups of three. Your body doesn't know when there's been an error in the DNA coding. It doesn't know that. It's going to code exactly what it has uh, c copied. Deletions. Point mutation in which one base is deleted. Codons are read in groups of three again, and deleting one requires the entire sequence to be misread because they're going to be keep, uh, being read in groups of three. That never changes. Your body doesn't know when there's been an error. Now, these last two are known as frame shift mutations, that is insertions and deletions. Now, it can alter a protein so it can't perform its original function at all. So let's take a look at an example of a gene mutation. So here I have CGA, ACT, and CGA. I know this is DNA because uh, there are T's here, no uh, U's. So I know right away this is uh, DNA. So if this copies correctly, it should read CGA because it's read three groups at a time. Down here I have CCA. Well, this G has been substituted to a C. That's called substitution. Let's take a look at this next one. Here we have CCA and this should read CCA. It doesn't, it reads CCG. Well, if I go back it says CCAA, CCGAA. Well, something has been inserted here. It is the uh, base G, and that is what we call an insertion. If I skip right over here, I can see that this is going to be read in groups of three, uh, CCG, AAC, TCGA. Down here, I have CC, good so far, my Gs, my AA, my C. Uh-oh, there's an, there's an error here. It should read... Uh, CTC, but it doesn't. It just reads CCGA. Well, the DT has been uh, deleted, and that is deletion. So those are the three examples of uh, point mutations. They happen at, happen at a single point. These are called frame shift because it shifts the entire reading uh, sequence. So let's talk about chromosomal mutations. They involve changes in the number or structure of chromosomes can change the locations of genes on chromosomes and change the number of copies of some genes. Now, there are four types of chromosomal mutations, deletion, duplication, inversion, and translocation. Now, deletion involves the loss of all or part of a chromosome. Duplication produces an extra copy of all or part of a chromosome. Inversion reverses the direction of parts of a chromosome. And translocation occurs when part of one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another chromosome. Do not confuse these with point mutations. Deletion, that is just like a point mutation, but these are referring strictly to uh, chromosomes. 
So here are uh, my examples. Here are my chromosomes. I have A, B, C, D, E, F. Over here, I have A, C, D, E, F. That is deletion. The B segment has been uh, deleted. Now, they're using A, B, C, D, E, F. Do not confuse these with the nucleotides or the bases. This is section A, section B, section C, section D, section E, section F, which holds a variety of information. Now, over here, uh, it should read A, B, C, D, E, F. Instead, it is read A, B, B, C, D, E, F. So we have duplication. Section B has been duplicated. So over here, we have A, B, C, D, E, F. It should read A, B, C, D, E, F. But what's happened is it has read A, E, D, C, B, F. So it has been inverted here. It's not being read in the correct order. Starting with A, B and C should be next. But instead, it's been flipped to another part of it. It has been inverted. And over here, we have the last one, translocation, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. This does not read A, B, C, D, E, F. It reads A, B, C, J, K, L. The D, E, F has been translocated to this other chromosome. So those are your example of chromosomal mutations. Now, the effects of mutations. A lot of people say they're negative and they will only uh, kill you. Uh, that's not always uh, true. Genetic events can be altered by natural effects or artificial means. Some may or may not affect an organism. Some, though, some, though can affect an individual organism, species, or an entire ecosystem. Now, many mutations are produced by errors in the genetic process. The cellular machinery that replicates DNA inserts an incorrect base roughly once in every 10 million bases. Now, I don't know about you, but our body copying 10 million letters at a time, making one error, that seems uh, pretty uh, efficient. Now, small changes in genes can gradu gradually accumulate over time because when you have an error, just one error in every 10 million bases, that error stays with you and you're going to pass it on to your next child. When your child has it, he has your error and then there may be another error. So now instead of carrying one, he may be carrying two or three, and it gets passed on and on uh, down the line. Now, stressful environment conditions may cause bacteria to increase mutation rates. This can be helpful because it can give bacteria new traits, such as the ability to consume a new food source or resist poison in the environment. Now, when we say this can be helpful, we mean helpful to the bacteria, not helpful to us. Uh, for example, penicillin and amoxicillin has been overprescribed since the 1950s, and now there's lots of uh, bacteria that's immune to it. There has been errors in the DNA which have accumulated over time, and it's been beneficial to the bacteria. So now if you get amoxicillin or penicillin, it may or may not work. Depends on what type of bacteria you're trying to treat. Now, some mutations arise from mutagens, which are simply chemical or physical agents in the environment. Examples of uh, chemical mutagens are certain pesticides, natural plant alkaloids, tobacco smoke, uh, pollution, some physical examples, electromagnetic radiation, x-rays, UV light. If these agents interact with DNA, they can produce mutations at a high rate. Sometimes cells can fix the damage, but if not, the DNA B sequence changes permanently. Now, some agents can interfere with base pairing, increasing the error of DNA replication. Some agents can weaken the DNA strand, causing breaks and inversions that produce chromosomal uh, mutations. So when you watch in a, a movie and you see a mutation where someone has sprouted wings or gained the ability to look through walls or whatever it is, that uh, is an, an example of a physical uh, mutagen. You know, they're exposed to electromagnetic radiation, maybe UV light, some x-rays, some uh, radioactive uh, waste, which would be uh, pollution, which is uh, chemical. Now, those are extreme uh, mutagens. Do not think if you go hang out by a, you know, a giant barrel of radioactive waste, you're going to sprout wings and fly. You're just going to get cancer and, um, you know, most likely damage your DNA to the point where you can't recover. But uh, those are effects of mutations. Now, harmful and helpful mutations. Some mutations don't even change the amino acid specified by a codon, while others alter a complete protein or even an entire chromosome. The effects of mutations on genes vary widely. Some have little or no effect. Some produce beneficial variations. Some negatively disrupt gene function. I have to point this out. There's a lot of people on websites who talk about that uh, mutations only result 
in destroying the organism. And that's simply not true. Those people have no idea what they're talking about. When you're online reading information, you got to be very careful and you look at the source to make sure it is credible. Now, whether a mutation is beneficial or negative depends on how much of the DNA changes relative to the organism's situation. Mutations are often thought as negative, but without them, organisms could not evolve because mutations are the source of genetic variability in a species. Most mutations have little or no effect on the expression of genes or the function of proteins. All right, harmful effects. Now, some of the most harmful mutations dramatically change protein structure or gene activity. Defective proteins can disrupt normal biological activities and result in a genetic disorder. Cancers are an example of mutations because it causes uncontrolled growth of cells. Sickle cell disease is another example. causes changes in the shape of blood cells. Sickle cell disease is caused by point mutation in one of the polypeptides found in hemoglobin, which is an oxygen-carrying protein. Symptoms are anemia, severe pain, frequent infections, and stunted growth. So that's an example of a harmful effect of mutations. All right, beneficial effects. Now, some variations produced by mutations can be highly advantageous. Mutations often produce proteins with new or altered functions that can be useful to organisms in different or changing environments. Some have helped insects resist, resist pesticide and adapt to new chemicals in the environment. If you ever look at roach spray from about 10, 15 years ago, you'll notice the ingredients have changed. That's because roaches are evolving. They're not evolving on purpose. There's been an error in their DNA where the poison that used to work doesn't work anymore and now they've had to change the ingredients. Many mosquitoes are now resistant to pesticides because of mutations. The mosquitoes aren't choosing to evolve. There is errors in their D error in their DNA coding that has caused them to evolve to resist pesticides. Humans have mutations that increase bone strength and bone density, making fractures less likely. Those are examples of beneficial mutations. Some humans are being born resistant or immune to the HIV virus that causes AIDS. This was found a few years ago in Africa. There are children being born from HIV positive mothers and which should be passed on to their child, but their child is immune to HIV. The child cannot get it. That is a beneficial mutation. All right, last one, some more beneficial effects. Now, plant and animal breeders often make use of these good mutations. When a complete set of chromosomes fail to separate during meiosis, the gametes that result can be triploid or tetraploid. Tri meaning three, tetra meaning four. Now, when an organism has an extra set of chromosomes, it's called polyploidy. Polyploid plants are often stronger and longer than diploid plants. Bananas and limes have been growing using polypoid plants so they can grow stronger and grow a little longer. More bang uh, for the buck for us at the uh, grocery store. Polyploidy can also occur naturally in citrus plants, often through spontaneous mutations. And we talked about this uh, naturally. It's, of course, it's going to be spontaneous mutations because there's going to be an error in the DNA code. Uh, that's it for mutations. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. We'll see you guys next time.